Hello and welcome to a very gloomy Shanghai day. Have you ever considered just how important a car's name can be? I mean, these auto companies spend billions of dollars developing a new model and then hand it off to the marketing department and say, well, don't mess this up. That's how we end up with names like Accord and Camry. But sometimes, oh sometimes, a company really goes for it. And that's how we get something like this. The Haval Big Dog, a car whose name can only be written in all caps IMPACT FONT. But is having one of the best names ever bestowed on a vehicle enough to make this a compelling compact SUV? Let's find out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell when you're done watching. It really helps us to continue to bring you compelling content about the amazing Chinese car market. <laughs> This channel is really on a roll recently when it comes to reviewing cars that are uh, heavily inspired by those of more well-known brands. First it was the Hongqi H9 and now the Big Dog, which to me looks like at least three off-roading icons. The Ford Bronco, the Land Rover Defender, and the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. The overall shape I think most looks like the Bronco with its boxy outline and rounded edges. But now that I look at it, maybe it looks more like the Defender? But the headlights, the headlights, those are all G-Wagon. Unless those are, no, they also kind of look like the Defenders. Haval is really committed to this dog theme, as evidenced by the fact that you can choose from colors including Black Dog, Blue Dog, and Red Dog. Can you guess what this one is called? Actually, it's Shimmering Pearl Metallic. No, I'm kidding, it's White Dog. The big dog looks almost toy-like in its proportions. I think this is due in large part to the fact that the greenhouse is exceedingly small. This is compounded by the fact that despite it being almost half a meter shorter than something like a Ford Explorer, it's actually two centimeters taller than the Explorer. Overall, I like the way it looks, but it does come off as a bit generic. It's like something you might find in the discount section of the toy store, simply labeled Off-Roader. The rear end styling is a little bit more unique, with these wraparound tail lights that distinguish it a bit from the Land Rover Defender and the Ford Bronco. If we open up the rear hatch here, you will see that cargo space is acceptable for this class. The only problem is the load floor is a little bit too high, making it less usable. Before we start talking about the interior of the big dog, I want to talk a little bit about the pricing. For $18,000, you can get yourself an entry-level Husky trim. From there, you can upgrade to the Labrador, Border Collie, Belgian Malinois, and finally, the range-topping Chinese Rural Dog, which is basically the Chinese way of saying a mutt. That last one will cost you about $23,000. The car we're sitting in now is a Malinois trim level, which is somewhere around the upper middle of the lineup. Honestly, it ain't half bad for its $21,000 price tag. I like the overall layout of the interior, including these two vents that flank the controls here on the center console. I do have a few small complaints about the interior. I really don't like the look of this transmission knob here. The chrome comes off as looking very cheap, and I also don't think it's appropriate for something that's supposed to have off-roading pretensions. I also think that the steering wheel is very similar to what you'd find in a Land Rover Defender, specifically the flat buttons here on the side. In terms of equipment, you get a heads-up display, a 360-degree camera system, automatic braking, and a decent-sized center screen. I would have enjoyed heated seats in this weather, but that's just about all it's missing. The instrument cluster is made up of two stacked screens, but as far as I can tell, the one up top is really only for displaying the gear you're in. Seems like a bit of a waste, since you can already see that in the lower screen, but I guess it's convenient. Interior material quality seems to be aligned with what you'd expect from a car at this price range. It's pretty cheap plastic as far as the eye can see, but everything seems screwed together pretty well. 
and this 10,000 kilometer example is free of any squeaks or rattles. Back seat space is quite plentiful and there are two easily accessible USB charging ports here in the middle. There was one surprising thing though. When I reached my hand between these bottom cushions, I was hoping to find a strap that would allow me to lift up the bottom cushion and fold it out of the way. Well, my hand does wrap around something that could be a strap, but thankfully I realized that it was actually some loose wires before giving it a good yank, because who knows what would have happened if I'd done that. This seems like an instance when they need to go that extra mile on their finishing to make sure things like that stay out of the reach of small children and uh, stupid automotive reviewers like me. The Big Dog's range-topping Mutt trim level comes with all-wheel drive and a 2-liter Turbo 4 pushing out 207 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque, while all other models are front-wheel drive and come with a 1.5-liter Turbo 4 making 169 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque. Both put power through a 7-speed DCT. When it comes to the driving experience of the big dog, there really isn't that much to say. The 1.5 liter turbo and the 7 speed DCT work together pretty well to deliver smooth power. It's really only remarkable in how much better it is than some of the older Havals that I've previously driven. The suspension is quite soft and there is plenty of body roll, but that makes for a comfortable ride as well. I'm not even going to pretend that I'm going to take this thing off-road because that's not what it's actually for. It's built to look like it can go off-road, not actually do it. That brings me to my biggest takeaway about the big dog. For the same price as a 1.5 liter version of this car, you could get a 2 liter version of its sister car, the Haval H6. The H6 is one of the best-selling cars in the entire Chinese market and it is a perfectly competent, compact SUV. It also might get slightly better or equal fuel economy, considering the fact that it's not shaped like a box. The H6 seems like the obvious answer, doesn't it? But I don't know if that's right. I think the reality is that the big dog isn't just an alternative to more traditional crossovers like the H6. It's also a cheaper alternative to something like a Jeep Wrangler. Before you get out your pitchforks and torches, I'm not trying to say that it can compete from a performance perspective. This thing couldn't keep up with even a base Wrangler. What I mean is that it's a cheaper way of expressing to the world, I am an adventurous, outdoorsy type, without having to pay for all the extra equipment that will allow you to, you know, actually take it off-road. People who buy this thing want to look like an off-roading legend, while also enjoying the economy and comfort of a front-wheel drive vehicle with a 1.5-liter engine. Compare that to the person who convinces themselves they need a Jeep Wrangler with locking diffs just to go to the grocery store. They're both posers, but I wouldn't blame someone for choosing the comfort of the big dog. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. It really helps us to keep bringing you content about the exciting Chinese car market.